It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Large protests took place in various cities in Brazil last Sunday with the largest formation in Sao Paulo, where media outlets estimated that over 100,000 people took to the streets against the new conservative government of President Michel Temer. Last week, Brazil's Senate had voted to remove President Dilma Rousseff from office in what her supporters have called a legislative coup. Sunday's protesters were mainly calling for the ouster of President Temer and demanded new elections. Let's have a look at what one of the protesters had to say. Para mostrar o sentimento verdadeiro do povo e para que o presidente Temer saiba o que está pensando o povo brasileiro diante do golpe que foi realizado contra a presidenta Dilma, que não cometeu crime de responsabilidade, muito menos qualquer ato ilícito. É uma pessoa séria que sempre agiu para o bem. Once these protests in Sao Paulo officially ended, police unexpectedly clamped down on the remaining protesters and attacked them with tear gas and rubber bullets. Police claimed it was to prevent looting, but reporters from BBC and Spain's newspaper El País say they saw no evidence of looting. While the clashes took place in the streets of Sao Paulo, President Temer, who was in China for the G20 summit, told media, and I quote, these are small groups, I don't have it numerically, but they are 40, 50, maybe 100 people, he said. Joining us now from Sao Paulo, Brazil, is Alex Main. Alex is a senior associate for international policy at the Center for Economic Policy and Research, where he focuses on US foreign policy in Latin America and the Caribbean. Alex, good to have you with us. Great to be back, Charmaine. So, Alex, uh, you are in Sao Paulo at the moment. How large were these protests and uh, what are the newspapers saying about them? Well, I wasn't there, uh, but um, certainly there are many, many images of the poor, uh, protests. And you can see that they really stretch from one end to the other of the enormous Paulista Avenue, which is sort of the main boulevard that uh, crosses downtown Sao Paulo here. Uh, and, you know, as you were saying, as the protest came to an end, there were scenes of total mayhem as uh, a great deal of repression uh, took place. Uh, there was lots of tear gas. Uh, there have been people hurt. Um, and uh, it's really given us a taste of things to come, I think. Uh, but what was interesting is that you hadn't seen very big protests uh, in Brazil for a while. You saw a number of small protests. Uh, during the Olympic Games, but it really seems that with this final decision uh, that the Brazilian Senate made in which they have permanently suspended the elected President Dilma Rousseff from office, uh, it um, suddenly you know, woke people up to the um, terrible reality of a government, an unelected government that's taking the country in a very, very right-wing uh, direction. So um, there's definitely a sort of a changed ambiance uh, now in Sao Paulo, and I have walked around the streets a bit, and one thing you do see are uh, lots of graffiti, graffiti saying, for a Temer, get out Temer, and also saying, you know, Temer is a gold pista, uh, Temer is a coup perpetrator. And uh, so what is the general mood there when you talk to people about what happened to Dilma Rousseff and uh, what's to come in the near future? Well, you know, the, the mood is, I think, one of growing resistance, really. And that's what we saw with these protests. And, um, you know, people are trying to organize. It's not easy because, you know, the party that ruled uh, for the last 12 years, the, the uh, Partido de Trabajadores, the uh, Workers' Party of Lula da Silva and Dilma Rousseff, is not very greatly admired and broadly admired in uh, Brazilian society today. And, you know, with good reason, they've also been implicated in many corruption scandals, though, um, as the mainstream media in the U.S. Um, doesn't always point out, of course, uh, Dilma Rousseff was not implicated in these corruption scandals. And in fact, one of the few clean senior political figures, um, and she was uh, taken down course, by some of the most corrupt uh, members of the political class here. Uh, so in any, at any rate, I think there's a lot of discontent with um, 
political parties in general here. And I think, you know, people are focused now on sort of renewing the grassroots struggles and, and social movements, um, including the, the MST, the landless workers uh, movement, the um, movement of those without roofs, the Sentechos, uh, and others are, are very energized, uh, working together in a unified manner. And I think this does give a certain amount of hope, if not for the short term, uh, at least in the medium or long term in Brazil. Right. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Alex, President Temer made, a, made light of the protest, claiming that it was only a handful of people. Obviously, that was not the case. There are other indications that Temer is trying to minimize the opposition against him um, by soft peddling the, uh, the kind of protest that's going on. Even when he was at the Olympics, at the opening ceremonies, there was a lot of boos uh, against him. Um, what is the likelihood? that he will step aside and hold these elections as the as the protesters are demanding well it's entirely unlikely um, and you know I think uh, you know this was a right-wing power grab they weren't able to win the right wasn't able to win uh, through elections in the last elections they lost though by a small margin uh, and uh, they're not prepared to uh, now release their grip on power after having spent 12 years uh, trying to get back in control. So I think that's entirely unlikely. It's uh, more uh, than certain that he will be in place until the end of 2018. The only manner that he might be dislodged might be an internal coup uh, within uh, his party and together with one of the other opposition parties. His party is the PMDB and, and the PSDB could work together to unseat him and uh, then they would uh, carry out if they unseated him through an impeachment process as was done with Dilma Rousseff. Uh, if this takes place in the last two years of the presidential term, there are then indirect elections through the Congress. And as we know, the Congress is close to 60% corrupt um, and controlled by the opposition and they most certainly would put in another one of their um, leaders, uh, and it could well be José Serra, uh, the current foreign minister. Alex, in a recent Wall Street Journal article, President Temer indicated that he wasn't going to push through uh, undoing some of the PT programs, like the welfare program, the Bolsa Familia, the housing program, and its community doctors programs, and all these good things that PT put into place, because he fears that there is mounting opposition against him, like the demonstrations we just saw. Um, are people buying that? and? Do do they realize how serious undoing these programs would mean to their livelihood? Well, no, I think I think we have to see what's going to happen at this place, uh, at this at this moment. I mean, um, the next steps aren't very clear. Uh, we know that uh, legislation has been introduced to deregulate the labor market more, um, to carry out some broad reforms, structural reforms of the economy, um, and certainly to do away. Uh, or to diminish a lot of the social programs. We have to see now um, whether the Congress and uh, the president move forward on this agenda. So, that, so that's not entirely clear. And of course, there's only so much that an unelected government can do, and particularly when you have protests that are growing in the country. Alex, interesting statements were issued uh, by Human Rights Watch, the person responsible for uh, Latin America, and also the Inter-American uh, Commission on Human Rights. What are they saying about what took place uh, in Brazil last week? Well, what's interesting, I think, about these statements is, I mean, that they're diverging. Um, for one, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, where a petition has uh, just been filed by members of the unthroned um, President Dilma Rousseff, members of her party, um, to try to get a case opened to look into what they say obviously was a coup um, by the Inter-American uh, Commission and um, after that the Inter-American Court on Human Rights. Uh, that uh, statement that was released by the Inter-American Commission um, expresses concern about irregularities, about the arbitrary nature of the impeachment process, 
um, and, you know, about just the general manner in which the impeachment process has taken place. Um, and uh, meanwhile, you have um, a former member of that commission, Jose Miguel Vivanco, who's at uh, Human Rights Watch in charge of uh, the Americas program there, who was in Brazil. Um, You're talking about the, Jose Miguel Vivanco. That's right, Jose Miguel Vivanco. He was in Brazil um, really just as, you know, uh, Dilma Rousseff was being uh, removed from power by the Brazilian Senate. And um, he, you know, held um, a press conference and he told the media and, and it was picked up by all of the right wing media in Brazil that uh, they, Human Rights Watch, doesn't consider this to be a coup, nor will they ever consider it to be coup, a coup. They said the Brazilians should be proud of the example that they've set uh, for the world. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, largely praised uh, the whole impeachment process and said it really showed, you know, that uh, Brazilians, Brazil's institutions and democracy are strong, a bit reflecting the same line that the State Department has taken um, ever since the impeachment process against Dilma Rousseff was launched. Um, and in con contrast with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, uh, in contrast with many human rights groups, uh, and there have been many statements over the last few weeks, um, uh, including one that was signed by a broad range of human rights groups, uh, women's uh, groups, um, uh, workers, uh, organizations, including the AFL-CIO and others, um, you know, that really denounced uh, the whole process. Um, and point out, pointed out how flawed it was, where, of course, the main charge against Dilma of violations of the fiscal laws in Brazil uh, were thrown out by Brazil's public prosecutor. Uh, therefore, there was absolutely no substance to the impeachment, um, you know, when it was uh, finalized uh, just a week ago. Um, so, you know, there are very obvious flaws. Uh, Vivanco should be aware of this. But, you know, we really saw his agenda as well in these same statements that he made to the Brazilian press, where he praised uh, the de facto foreign minister, José Serra, uh, who has come out very strongly against the current government of Venezuela, um, has made, you know, a, a lot of statements against Venezuela and is trying to um, prevent Venezuela from exercising the presidency of uh, Mercosur, the bloc of countries in the south of South America, which uh, Venezuela is now a member of. Um, so he's been on the offensive, and Vivanco came out very supportive of Seha. And so, you know, we see that his agenda is a very narrow one in the region. It's to go after Venezuela. Um, and any government willing to do so, uh, you know, no matter how um, weak its um, democratic credentials may be, as is the case in Brazil, uh, it doesn't matter as so long as they are focused on trying to undermine uh, the government in Venezuela. So that's his real agenda. And, um, of course, he's given a big boost to the right wing in Brazil through these statements. Um, and not just the right wing in Brazil, but also in the U.S. You have people like uh, Andres Oppenheimer of the Miami Herald who have picked up uh, Vivanco's quotes. Um, and um, you really saw it all over the Brazilian press. Look, um, Human Rights Watch is saying that, you know, everything is perfectly democratic in Brazil. Therefore, it has to be true. He's saying it's not a coup, therefore it has to be coup, a coup. Uh, th therefore that has to be true. Uh, so he is really giving a lot of legitimacy to um, this uh, new government in Brazil. Very strange behavior on the part of uh, Human Rights Watch, um, uh, who otherwise, in some very good cases, you know, give moral guidance to these kinds of issues, seem to be failing the Brazilian people, as it did, I must remind you, uh, prior to uh, the coup against President Chavez in Venezuela, those of us who are familiar with, the, uh, with how uh, this particular director, Vivanco, behaved, prior to the coup that took place against President Chavez and thereafter with similar statements. Um, we could uh, continue this conversation, Alex, but time is uh, limited in terms of how much people will spend in uh, watching these things online. So I thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope to continue this conversation as things unfold in Brazil. Thanks, Germany. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.